types of public expenditure that is planned expenditure and non planned expenditure there are two types of taxes so one is direct tax and another one is indirect tax defense expenditure one of the highest expenditure of total expenditure of india what are the best examples for that indirect taxes just gst goods and service taxes considered as indirect taxes there are two types of public debt so one is internal debt and external debt namaste my dear students shubha hebba here faculty of commerce vidyashrama first grade college the temple of excellence mysore my dear students a warm welcome to the session how does the government will spend on infrastructure development and how to collect the revenues from the publics and after collecting how to distribute it and also just the government how to manage the public debt or financial crisis dear students welcome to the session in this session we are going to discuss about fiscal policy in india let us start the session with different content that fiscal policy in india meaning of fiscal policy and next one objectives of fiscal policy what are the different objectives of fiscal policy and instrument of fiscal policy public debt public revenues and public expenditure and budget deficit so these are all the different instrument of fiscal policy meaning of public revenues and there are different types of tax revenues and non tax revenues and then public expenditure again two types of public expenditure that is planned expenditure and non planned expenditure and another one important instrument of fiscal policy that is public debt and the management of public debt in this session we are going to discuss about these are all important content which belongs to fiscal policy in india what is fiscal policy fiscal policy is concerned with the government to provide a stable economy by regulating the finance government accumulate the funds through the taxation and of course it utilize the funds as an expenditure on public sectors and of course if it is not possible to maintained by taxation it go through debt internal debt or external debt so the concept which belongs to fiscal policy then what are the different objectives of fiscal policy that is very important yes to promote economic growth how yes establishment or set up of different industries like small scale industries and heavy industries by public sectors which can create the employment opportunities and which is led to the infrastructure development of economic system and what are the infrastructure development transport will get develop and then education system and health facilities so these are all the different sector will get develop with that development of industrial sectors contribution to industrial sector or development of industrial sectors or setup of heavy industries like fertilizer industries then chemical industries then electrical industries and also that capital good industries which can create that infrastructure development of an economic system so by the way it helps to promote the total economic growth and next one it reduce the income and wealth disparities it can create the employment opportunities which helps to increasing the per capita income which can create the conditions or which can reduce the income inequalities and then wealth disparities everybody can utilize the government opportunities establishment of public sector participation of public sectors which can create the social economic welfare motives and next one to provide the employment opportunities establishment of different industries and just promote the agriculture sector and with this taking the different measures to solve the unemployment problems and employment generation programs which lead to contribution to full employment system of our country the fiscal policy can create this very important conditions and next one to ensure the stability in prices yes st prices of very essential commodities 
that fluctuations in prices or that inflation, deflation, it is a common phenomenon in that economic system. Yes, by providing the subsidies for essentials like gas, electricity and then water supply, which helps to affordable price to the common people. So this is the real uh, objectives of fiscal policies. And next one, to correct balance of payment deficits by encouraging the exports, by increasing the subsidies and producing the important products which that import substitution products which can create the balance of payments. So, and next one, provide that effective administration. The much more importance that expenditure on police, then defense, then education sector, then legislator, judiciary. So these are all the sectors which can secure the economic system and then which can secure the political conditions of the countries. That is why the fiscal policy is one of the important instrument which helps to smooth the functioning of economic system. Let us discuss what are the different instruments of fiscal policies. First one, public revenues. And second one, public expenditure and public debt and fourth one that is deficit financing. Let us discuss one by one. First one public revenues. What is public revenue? Income earned by the government from that both tax and non-tax revenues. Accumulate of tax and non-tax revenue which collected by the government it is called public revenues. So that tax revenues what do you mean by tax? Tax is a compulsory contribution to the government levied by the government on the citizen. There are two types of taxes. So one is direct tax and another one is indirect tax. What is direct taxes? Those in which the tax burden cannot be transferred to others. So everybody should pay some certain amount to the government directly that is called direct tax and the rate of amount which have decided by the government only. So what are the different sources of tax revenues, income taxes, corporation taxes, custom duties and central excise duties, wealth tax, service tax. So these are all the different taxes which belongs to that direct taxes which is compulsory contribution by the citizens to the government directly. It is called direct tax. And next one indirect taxes. What is indirect taxes? The burden of tax or tax burden is transferred to others. It is called that indirect taxes. It levied on goods and services and levied by the government only. What are the best examples for that indirect taxes? Just G GST, goods and service taxes considered as indirect taxes. Before introducing the goods and service taxes, there are so many taxes. Now it is concluded at that only one taxes, just goods and service taxes, that is GST. Yes, the tax revenue, there are two types, direct taxes and indirect taxes. Revenue considered as tax revenues and non-tax revenues. Yes, again that non-tax revenues, it is just recurring income that is earned from sources other than the taxes by the government. They are revenue receipts and not generated by taxing the public, which is not in the form of tax revenues. It is called non-tax payments. Yes, that is fee, penalties, just interest receipts, then fines, grants. So these are all the coming under the non-tax revenues. So there are two important types, tax revenues and non-tax revenues. Under the tax revenues, just direct taxes and indirect taxes and non-revenues which is not considered as a tax. It is not a compulsory contributions that fees and fines and then different penalties. So these are all that interest receipts. So these are all belongs to the non-tax revenues. And next one, public expenditures. What do you mean by public expenditure? It is incurred by the government for the promotions of economic, social welfare of the people. The government always responsible for public and for providing the services and just to maintain the social welfare of the people by different manners. It has to spend so many amount of money on that improvement of education sector, health sector, then transport, roads, communications. So just improving the infrastructure development also as well as improving the agriculture sector and industrial sectors. That is why it spends a lot of amount of money on these are all the sectors. This is called public expenditure. What is the real causes to increases 
in public expenditures. First one, provisions of social services. That India is a mixed economic system, participation of socialist and also as well as capitalist. In the sense, the government taking a major role to run the economic system. And also we can see private sector participation. But the major role carried by government only. Yes, the government is taking highest responsibilities to carry the economic system by providing the different social services. Establishment of so many education institutions, schools and colleges, establishment of so many hospitals, establishment of public sector industries. So these are all which can create the expenses to the government. This is one of the important causes arise of public expenditures. And next one, increase in the defense expenditures. So defense expenditure, one of the highest expenditure of total expenditure of India. That is 15.5% of total expenditure which occupied by defense expenditures. And only 3% of total expenditure reserved for education purpose and nowadays it is coming to spend on that education and also as well as health sectors. So that improving the infrastructure development it takes more expenses yes of course just it is considered by the government only and next one rapid growth of population see increasing the population rate which tells about increasing the requirements yes the rate of distributions of national income which depends upon that populations we know that increasing in the population rate which can create the reducing the distributions of resources and of course the growth of population which is the major causes of public expenditures and next one huge expenditure on civil amenities providing the services conducting the elections so these are all which requires that huge amount of expenses by the government and next one economic development establishment of industries providing the subsidies to that agriculture sector subsidies to that to maintain the price stability for that electricity gas and water supply so these are all which can create the expenses by the government of course the government will provide the facility in the sense we are all taking that facility we are all enjoying with that facility but it is real expense to the government if the government is giving free which tells about it is expense to the government yes we are getting free only these are all the important causes which can create or which can increasing in the public expenditures again there are two types of public expenditures so one is planned expenditures one is planned expenditures and another one is non planned expenditures planned expenditure and another one is non planned expenditure planned expenditure in the sense just government allocated the funds or spent the funds with the plan for example, providing the subsidies for agriculture sector, expenses on industrial sectors and then education sector and then healthcare facilities, providing the funds for infrastructure development. So these are all coming under the planned expenditures and non-planned expenditure which can create it in suddenly. If the government will take any certain activity, certain programs for urgent purpose, so which can create that particular expenses, it is considered as non-planned expenditures. So these expenditure can occur with non-planning. This is considered as planned expenditure and non-planned expenditures. Next, another one important instruments that is public debt. What do you mean by public debt? It refers to borrowing of the government to meet budget deficit. If it is not possible to meet the expenditure by fund itself, the government can borrow the loan from internal or external. It is called public debt. There are two types of public debt. So one is internal debt and external debt. If the government will borrow in the funds from internal peoples or within the country, it is called internal debt. And if the government, it is not possible to solve the financial crisis, it can borrow the funds from foreign countries. So those considered as in external debt. Yes, 
that internal debt it is not that much serious because it can easily manageable and that external debt it is one of the important serious matter will be to government how it is yes the management of debt is very important and of course now we are in that new economic policy era we have adopted the different policies to boost our economic system by 1991 july 1st we have adopted the new economic policies yes we have undergone with that financial crisis and we have approached the imf and world bank for 7 billion dollars loan what is the causes behind that uh, particular process yes we were not able to meet that financial crisis by internally and public sector undertakings the failure performance of public sector undertakings and very lowest contributions by sector that different agriculture sector industrial sector also as well as service sectors so which created that financial crisis employment conditions also the very lowest rate and output also in the lowest rate this was the condition finally it was not possible to raise the funds by internally and it has approached the imf and world bank and just they have agreed to provide the funds with the certain conditions that is liberalization privatization and globalization this is the real causes Uh, we have adopted the new economic policies and uh, that's why i'm telling that management of public debt is very important and nearby that is 400.6 billion dollars 400.6 billion dollars we have pu- external public debt and of course it is not in the form of cash transactions it is due to trade gap yes we are exporting so many products from different different countries which can created by balance of payments which can create by balance of that uh, deficit balance of payments deficit balance of payments which means import is more than exports yes so this was the conditions how to manage the public debt it is very required to manage the public debt because it create the financial crisis in the country how to manage the public debt yes that is greater reliance on domestic borrowings greater reliance on domestic borrowings borrowings over external debt and consolidation of debt portfolio and with this interest cost of public debt must be minimized so these are all the different content which can helps to manage the public debt these are all the different instruments of fiscal policy and one of the important instruments that is fiscal deficit and other content like budget deficit financial commissions these are all will discuss in the next session dear students this is the time to end this session thank you for join me in the session keep watching read well thank you